Hello there. Today I'm going to run a comparison between Deep Sky Stacker and stacking in PixInsight. Um, I think this will be interesting. I've never really done a good comparison between the two. And first of all, I just want to show you what a single raw image looks like of the Crescent Nebula. Now this is a five minute exposure. And on the right, this is what a stacked image of 40 raw images at five minutes each looks like. And you can see there's definitely uh, um, more detail in the picture on the right, more nebulosity on the right here. Uh, the, the, the nebula itself has more detail in it. And the more images you stack, the more detail you'll even pick up. So I stopped at 40 images, but I easily could have done twice as many. So let's move on to Deep Sky Stacker and, and see how that works. Okay, I am in Deep Sky Stacker. And what I'm going to do first, and this could serve as a quick tutorial on how to use Deep Sky Stacker. And what I'm going to do first is open our light files. And I put them in a folder called Deep Sky Stacker vs. PixInsight. So I'm going to open up my lights. I'm going to highlight all of them with Control A. And I'm going to open. And the lights you open, they don't automatically come checked. So I'm just going to hit checked all because we want to process all of them. Next, I'm going to open my dark files. And these are five minute exposures, the lights are. And so I'm going to pick from my library of five minute dark files. And I have 50, you can see right here, 50 dark files. Next, I'm going to open my flat files. And I put them in a separate folder again under this. And I have 20 flat files. And lastly, I'm going to click on my bias files. I have those in my library too. And I have 50 bias files. And that is really how easy it is to just use Deep Sky Stacker. And that's why a lot of people like this program. It just It's just so easy to load in your files and start your registration process and stacking. And what I'm going to do with Deep Sky Stacker and PixInsight, I'm just going to stick with the defaults for this comparison because there's a million different things you can do in each one. But I'm going to stick with the basics because the basics themselves work pretty good for both. So after I've loaded in all my files, the next thing I want to do is click on register check pictures and you can see here um select the best 90 percent of the of this and stack them or select sorry about that select the best 90 percent pictures and stack them if i knew how to read but what i'm going to do is i already know all of the lights are good so i'm just going to say stack 100 percent of them and i'm not going to change any other any other defaults or stacking parameters we're just going to go with this I'm going to hit OK, and we'll let this run. And one thing about Deep Sky Stacker <laughs> that it's a big benefit is that it's free, and that's why a lot of people like it. It's not only simple, but it's free compared to PixInsight, which last I checked is nearly $300. But of course, along with that $300 you're going to spend is um, probably an unrivaled post-processing package. And, <laughs> that was worth it enough for me to buy it. So we'll let this run. And well, it is finished and it took all of just seven minutes to complete. And this is what the stacked image looks like. And we're not going to do any processing in Deep Sky Stacker. We're just going to save off this stacked file. So we're going to go down here and say, uh, save picture to file. I'm going to put it in my Deep Sky verse. PixInsight folder, and let's just make a folder called Stacked. And we'll call it DSS for Deep Sky Stacker Stacked. And we'll just say, uh, we'll leave with the second option, embed adjustments in the saved image, but do not apply them. I didn't even make any changes to the image, so we'll save as is. Okay, that's it. We're done with Deep Sky Stacker. Now let's move on to PixInsight.
Okay, I am in PixInsight, and let's start our stacking process in PixInsight. And the way I like to do it is go into Script, Batch Preprocessing, oops, and Batch Preprocessing again. And some people will probably be screaming bloody murder, you don't want to stack your files this way, but it works. You know, this is the way I roll. Let's just do it. So I like to use the Add Custom feature. Click Add Custom, and let's add our lights. Let's go to Deep Sky Stacker folder, Lights. I'm going to, that auto save is from my Deep Sky Stacker, we'll just skip those. And let's click on all my lights. Open, we're gonna call them lights. And I'll just call them HA because these are actually from an HA filter. Click OK. And these are my lights. Now let's go back to Add Custom and add my flats. I'm going to click on Flats. I'm going to highlight all my flats. And skip the master. Again, that was created from Deep Sky Stacker. Click on Flat. And we'll just call these HA again to match up with our lights. OK. Let's go back and we'll add in our bias files from my library. All right, highlight the first one. And I need to be careful not to include that master from Deep Sky Stacker. Open that. We'll call these bias. And we'll just call those bias. And last. Let's add in our dark files. Click on Add again. Library. And let's choose from our five minute dark files because that's where our lights were, five minutes. And one thing about uh, the way I'm doing this here, oh, let me finish this off. We'll call this darks. Call that darks. And one thing this can also do for you is that if you've created images with multiple filters, you'll be able to actually stack all of your filters and go through an alignment process all in this routine. It really makes it easy when you're working with multiple filters. I actually have another video on how to stack and combine multiple filters if you want to check that out. It really makes it easy. And next, we want to just click on um, uh, pick a reference image. I already know like uh, this, this fourth file here is a good one. Just to pick a really good light image you have to use as a reference. And we'll make a new output folder where our masters are going to go. We'll go back to DSky Stacker. We'll just call this process. Select folder. And let's run it, and we'll see how long this takes. That's how you set up everything for stacking in PixInsight. We'll click Run, click Continue, and we're off to the races. And I'll be back when this is finished. Okay, PixInsight is finished, and it took about 13 minutes. Almost twice as long as the 7 minutes Deep Sky Stacker took. Now let's open up both stack files and see what they look like. I'll open up, this is Deep Sky Stacker on the left, and let's open up the master for PixInsight. Lights. And there we go. Screen transfer function, all right, let's stretch the Deep Sky Stacker picture on the left. Now let's take a look at uh, PixInsight on the right. Well, there is the comparison. And what do you think? Um, now, if you look up uh, Deep Sky Stacker versus PixInsight on the web, I think everyone will probably tell you PixInsight is the way to go. And um, I've seen instances of that with my own stuff. But in this comparison, it's close, and if you don't have pits in sight, I've seen a lot of people who are really good at this do just fine with Deep Sky Stacker. 
And maybe this isn't the most scientific test that I've run. I admit that. But when you look at the, uh, the stretched images side by side, and if all you have is Deep Sky Stacker, which you can get for free, uh, I think you're going to be just fine with it. And uh, now personally, I, I like to do everything now in, in PixInsight. Uh, and especially I, I use PixInsight for all the post-processing features you get with it, which are amazing. But if I'm in a real hurry, I'll probably just, just use Deep Sky Stacker if I need to show something to somebody really quick. And uh, that's all I've got to show. I, I, I hope this little demo helped. Or, you know, maybe you found it useful, maybe you didn't. But thanks for watching. Okay, I'll see you later.